Well, Razorback fans, I know that this year is not over, but I think next year is going to be the best year ever. Well, for Arkansas, that is. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Ranger Max podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by our newest sponsor, Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash college, And when you enter in a promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order at birddogs.com slash college. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday in the midway point of the week. And uh, as we've kind of talked about uh, a few times, things slow down a little bit in the sports world, which hopefully this week there will be a few big announcements that end up happening to where we can really break it down and start talking about a lot of the important things going on, especially with basketball. And we'll have some football news too. And also something that's been bothering me as part of a, a whining Wednesday, if you will, later in the show. But as you heard there in the cold open, I was talking about this year being the best year ever, or this upcoming season, upcoming year, however you want to put it, being the best year ever. And, you know, when you hear that, you probably say, that is dumb. That is very dumb. Why are you talking about this? This is not something that's relevant right now. This is not something that's, you know, like, it's so far off. Who cares? Well, here's the thing. I started talking to friends of mine and people on social media about just the idea of Arkansas and you know what the future holds for a lot of the sports because baseball of course is going on right now we know softball is too and also uh, congratulations to the track and field team sweeping the SEC and outdoors so that was awesome so you know there's still some Razorback sports going on and until they end uh, we really won't know exactly uh, you know what it what it holds as far as the weight of their success or their failures or disappointments or whatever it is but you know next year, looking at the future and looking at what the next step will be. I believe that next season, next year for all the sports, especially the major sports for razor and and for the Razorbacks, football, basketball, baseball, next year is going to be the best year ever, or at least the best year in a long time. Because this past season, as we know, has been riddled with injuries. And even though Arkansas found some success in basketball in the postseason and and baseball's still going on, so we don't really know what it may hold. They could win a championship for all we know. Um, it's really hard to say that this past year was a failure or bad or disappointing or anything, besides really the football team being a disappointment in the way that that year went, compared to the previous season. Because as we know, you had Razorback football go 9-4, and four, you had basketball go to the Elite Eight, beat Gonzaga, and then in baseball, you even went to Omaha in the College World Series. So it just seemed like everything was so great that year, like one of the best years overall for Razorback Athletics. And then this past one just kind of fell a little bit short, definitely in, ba- in, in football. In basketball, you were one game less than what you were able to do in postseason play. But there's no doubt the regular season was definitely filled with trials and tribulations. Injuries played a lot of part of that in football and in basketball. And again, baseball's not over yet, so we'll have to see what that holds. Now, there's no doubt that because of injuries, because of unforeseen circumstances and maybe too high of expectations at times, that this past year, it was fine. It was had its moments, but at least hasn't been to the point to where it was last year. So looking ahead, that's what you got to do is when you turn the page and when you feel like this past year was just not where it was supposed to be, you turn the page and you look at, okay, well, next year, will it be the same? Will it be better? Will it be worse? How how is it going to look? And honestly, with how much we've been talking about basketball, I think this is really where it spurned the conversation or at least the discussion I had in my own head about next year being the best year ever. I've said that on this football team with this football program that they are going to take significant steps forward this upcoming season. They will win eight games in the regular season at least, in my opinion. When we get closer to it, we'll, of course, get breakdowns and final predictions and everything. But I've said the reasons why I believe it. I think the team overall has upgraded their roster, generally speaking, across the board. 
I think that they hired some really good coaches that'll be in position to make them more successful. I think the schedule is much easier. I think you got the best quarterback in the SEC in KJ Jefferson, as well as the best running back in Rocket Sanders. You have uh, a very experienced team that's played in different places, whether it's via the transfer portal or you know whatever it may be. You've had some guys that have come in and being able to take a step forward and, and step right in and be a big time team and a uh, or at least a big time player on a big time team. Like you have all of that going for you, and so when you put all that together, I think the expectation and knowing that Sam Pittman has made the necessary changes to make the program better, I think that the expectation will be that Arkansas takes that major step forward. It's not only that, but the SEC West, you know, it's full of teams that aren't really terrible. Like there's not a bottom dweller team in the SEC West. But besides really Alabama, which even Alabama's not the Alabama of old, there's not just these teams where I'm like, oh my gosh, no chance Arkansas wins those games or no chance they even compete in those games. You know, I think that's not to say that Arkansas wins every game against the SEC West teams, but like, would it surprise you if I said Arkansas beat Auburn or Mississippi State or A&M or you know, Ole Miss? Like, would it surprise you if I said that they won those games? I don't think it would. I mean, the only ones that would be surprising would be Alabama, to be honest. And LSU, I think a little bit just because of how much they've done and how well they've uh, put together a team and a roster and talent, but still, it's it's like you had them dead to rights last year with a backup quarterback. So, who's to say and who's to really know what all comes into impact there too? But the point is, is that the football team I think is going to be significantly better, so much so that overall and a record wise, they could surpass what they did in 2021 and even get to a 10 win season. I think that that's an absolute possibility. And then the same thing with basketball as we've talked about with the transfer portal and. The guys that they've signed and you know what the roster is shaping up to be hasn't been finalized or anything just yet. But what it has done is that it has created such energy and such a great amount of addressing all the needs where you have great shooting, you have great scoring, you have great defense, you have great rebounding, you have great size, you have great athleticism, like you have experience, you have uh, you know, just everything that's gone with it to where it's putting it together, at, at least at this point in time, and we'll see, of course, I keep saying it, the Ron Holland situation. Uh, at this point in time, it's going to be the most loaded, experienced, and talented roster that Eric Musselman has had since his time at Arkansas. And we know what he's done so far at Arkansas, so it's kind of a scary thought for others to think of uh, what will happen if he has the most talent across the board. So we know that's into the mix. And then even in baseball, which I know baseball is not over yet. Like they, they could do great things this year and they could make it back to Omaha, maybe even win it all. And then when that happens, we'll revisit it and come back to it. But not to put aside this year and what's going on, but even looking towards next season, the amount of stupid talent you're going to be returning on your Razorback baseball team is absurd. And we know Dave Van Horn is always putting together one of the top recruiting classes in the country. We know he does a great job when it comes to the transfer portal, but uh, most, if not the vast majority of the high quality talent on this Razorback roster this year, they still got another year, sometimes two. And that's especially correct in pitching. Like you think about Hagen Smith, he's got at least another year. Peyton Stovall, at least another year. Gage Woods, a freshman. You know, got Brady Tiger's got at least another year. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just naming a few. You got plenty of other options there that and, and guys that are going to be returning and coming back that are going to be so big time for this team. And I know that there's other sports too that I'm sure people are going to bring up. You know, what we'll see what you know Mike Neighbors does with the women's basketball team. I know that they've yet to win an NCAA tournament game, and that's the goal, and we see the next step that they got to get to. Uh Razorback softball's been really coming around and uh they're in great position this year and they're hosting a regional. So we'll see if they can maybe make it to the College World Series in Oklahoma City. For the first time and there, you know, there's again, there's other sports there in, in there. And I know that I'm just bringing up the, the big three. But my point is, is this is that even with what's going on right now, and when you look at the state of things, when it comes to Razorback sports and Razorback athletics, there are legitimate reasons to believe that next year will be the best year that each of these respective sports have had in quite a long time. Like, I believe that the football team can win 10 games. And they have not won double-digit games since 2011, as we all know. And this millennium, they've only done it three different times. 
in 2006, in 2010, and in 2011. It's the only time they've won double digits. They're capable of that, and that could happen. The basketball team, as we know, they've put together some great seasons the past few years. But they are capable, perfectly capable, of being able to up that and even make a Final Four with the amount of talent that they have. Maybe even win a championship. They will have a championship caliber roster. I fully believe that. It could happen. And then in baseball, again, we all know that they're always going to be into the mix. So even though you get your frustrations in there, and even though it gets pretty annoying at times of how things go and how things you think should be, even though uh, things keep popping up and the frustrations come along, and you know you look at people to point the finger to and blame, you know, for whatever reason comes into play or whatever the problem may be. The point is, is that you got to feel good about what's going to be happening next year and for the future in general. I do. Nothing will take a step back. Worst case scenario, it stays the same. But the more likelihood is that everything will be better next year and moving forward. Take, take solace in that. Enjoy that. Because not everybody can say the same thing, especially here in the SEC. Talk about some football news and uh, getting added in, into another player here in just a segment of folks. I want to tell you about Bird Dogs. This is the newest sponsor here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. And you're probably wondering, what are Bird Dogs? Well, here's the thing. I, they, they sent me a few of their products, and it's pretty incredible. Like I, I have heard about them before, but I had never tried them before. And I was able to have, like, I'm very particular on how things fit. You know, when it comes to, especially my shorts, like, I, I don't like them to be too baggy, but I don't like them to be too tight. You know, I don't like them to be, uh, you know, not where I'm able to move around a lot, but, you know, I'm very particular on it. And I'll tell you, they send me a few of their products and it's incredible because I feel so much better wearing them. It, it, it's almost like when you first try them on, you're like, well, this feels weird. But then suddenly when you move around, like, wow, this is, this is great. They're not only extremely comfortable with the material that they have, but they're stretchy. They're not too tight. They're fitted, but they're not, you know, too baggy. They they make me look good. They make me feel good. It's almost incredibly tough to explain, but it's incredible how great these types of products are. Well, not only the fit, but the comfort and the versatility to where if I'm going out on the golf course, I can wear them. If I'm going out to the bar, I can wear them. Or if I'm just lounging around the house, I can wear them. And all the time, they're fitting for every single occasion. So I love it. I mean, we've had uh, a lot of people that have talked about it, whether it's uh, Bert, uh, Bert, Kirsch, uh, Bert Kirshner, if I could say his name right, uh, the comedian, as we know, big know, the machine. You know, he's been big on these bird dogs. Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports. He's been huge on these, huge on these. Of course, PFT, pardon my take, which I'm sure is your second favorite podcast next to the Locked On Razorbacks. They also take it, check it out, and they love bird dogs. So this isn't just me. This is a lot of people that you are seeing and hearing from in your everyday life. So take advantage of it. You can go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. And when you're in your promo code locked on college, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. So not only do you get great products, but you get an awesome Yeti tumbler with every order as long as you put in that promo code locked on college. So again, visit them today, check out their products, all the great things that they have at birddogs.com slash locked on college. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, Sam Pittman was able to add another player, this time out of the JUCO ranks, which isn't it funny that, you know, with the transfer portal, it, it's overtaken a lot of the JUCO stuff. Because I remember, man, some of the JUCO players that would come in football, basketball wise, they, they were the ones who were like, man, they could be high risk, high reward, big time gets or whatnot. I think, I think back in football, like I think of Riddell Krim, I think of Anthony Leon, you know, some guys that, that stepped in and, uh, you know, were big time players. Jeremiah Ledbetter was another one. You know, there was a few of those dudes that you just, you know, comes to mind and uh, how they played even in basketball, like Daryl Macon and, and Jalen Barford, uh, Juco guys that were really good. But anyways, Arkansas got another one in football, and this time it's a, another cornerback. And it's Chris Rhodes. Uh, he's six foot, 187 pounds. He's from Butler Community College in Kansas. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of uh, major D1 offers or anything other than Tennessee Martin, Towson, and Mississippi Valley State, but he drew interest from Missouri, Kansas State, and Oregon State. And Marcus Woodson was his lead recruiter there. And 
Uh, he's also going to be a preferred walk-on at Arkansas. So it's not a scholarship or anything like that, but he's going to be a preferred walk-on. Uh, he, uh, he, this past season, uh, he had to receive a medical hardship after suffering a hyperextended knee after his fourth game. He signed with San Diego State in 2021, and, where he's from Missouri, and he played in two games at South Dakota State where he signed and was able to preserve his red shirt. So you're probably hearing all that stuff, and you're like, what in the, who cares? Who cares about that? Why is a guy coming on and he's not a scholarship? And, you know, why, why is it even bringing a thing that's talked about and everything? Well, stick with me on this. I'm not saying this guy's going to come in and, and immediately make a huge impact where suddenly he's like the best cornerback on the team. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that it just goes to show you that the depth that Arkansas had in the secondary and especially at the cornerback's position was like it was not where it needed to be. It was, it, you kept hearing about guys that got added in, but they weren't legit guys. They weren't guys that, that could contribute or even contributed at some sort of level in college or anything like that. They were just kind of bodies being out there. And so the fact is, is that it, from what I've seen from Marcus Woodson and, and Travis Williams and, and, and the defensive coordinator and, and their defensive staff in general, is that they're big on depth. They're big on depth. They're big on communication. They're big on you know going after guys that, they could feel like not only can play right away and be some big time players, but also be able to contribute some way in de- in practices or in scrimmages or whatever, just to make it a lot better for the team overall. And so that's what I like seeing. That's what I've wanted to see for a long time is not just being able to add in some great players like that's great, too. But as we know, sometimes those great players get dinged up, they get hurt, they have to come out of games and whatnot. Do you have other guys stepping up and and getting it done. I think Razorback baseball is the prime example of what teams all want to be, but very few of them can actually be. Where you get hit with injuries, but you got a next man up mentality. I know it's cliche to say, but you got a next man up mentality where these guys step right up to the plate and say, I'm ready, let's go. And when they get out there, they do almost just as good a job, or in some cases, just as good of a job as the starters do. That's true team chemistry. That's true culture. And that's true depth. And Arkansas football, as much as I have loved watching it, as much as I appreciate and think how good they're going to be this year, and and they've had some good years in the past, what separated a lot of those things is like, oh, you say, well, great defense, blah, blah, blah. But also, it's just been depth. Like, they just have not had the depth to be able to make it work. And I think that that's something that they've really hammered home. That's why they keep adding defensive backs. That's why they've added tight ends. Uh, That's why they've added defensive linemen. The positions that need the most depth uh, to be able to not only work it in scrimmages, but in games and practices and all of that, they've been getting after and they've been getting it done. So that's the thing. I don't expect Chris Rhodes to be an All-American. That'd be great if he is. But what I at least appreciate and respect about it is that they continue to look at the things that they need to have done. They continue to, to put together the things that they need put together. And they at least understand and appreciate that, hey, if we're going to make this work, if we're going to put it all together. If we're going to make this uh, whole ship sail the right direction, we got to have enough guys to be able to help us out as well as uh, some high quality players to be able to, to bring us through and all those things too. So again, I, I think it's great. And I think I'd really appreciate it. And we'll, I can't wait for football season. I know it's the middle of baseball season and the weather's getting warm and all that, but the more and more I think about and talk about football, the more excited I get. So hopefully it's here before we know it, but uh, I'm going to spend a little time whining on the other side of the break. It's a whining Wednesday. That's what I'm going to call it. So, uh, you want to stick with us here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You won't miss it on the other side. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I want to call it a whining Wednesday, and I hope you all appreciate uh, my little uh, icon that I have there. For uh, Whining Wednesday. And if you don't understand the reference, just look it up and you'll probably understand it, at least from last year. Um, but yeah, I wanted to spend a little time complaining, whining about something because apparently I do that a lot anyways. But I, I've noticed, though, when we we see Razorback sports and the way it's played and you know the fans that get brought out and, and, and the fans are so passionate and so awesome about Razorback sports, it's great. Like That's why I have a job. Like That's why I have this podcast is so successful and has the the amount of subscribers and the amount of downloads that it has every single day. And like, you know, I have meetings with the people with uh, locked on in the college network and time and time again, it's just, you know, seeing what the 
podcast is able to do numbers wise compared to all the other college podcasts is incredible. And it's because of the passion that Razorback fans have for their sports and the constant wanting to hear about them, wanting to talk about them, wanting to know more about them, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, they're all for. And so that's where it, they make it great. And then, of course, everybody's going to appreciate it, especially me. But the one thing that I've noticed about, uh, you know, especially during baseball season, is it seems like everyone gets at each other's throats about, you know, how the game is just, it's like, you know, the critic, I can understand being critical of certain things because like, we're all critical of coaching decisions and player personnel and all of that. But sometimes it gets so into the mix where it's like fans, especially the ones that attend the game. I'm like, are you fans of the team? Are you fans of the game? Are you fans of just being seen? Are you fans of the visuals that you have? Are you fans of the, you know, the, the, the quirkiness of it all? Like, I, I don't know. It's just really shown to me how interesting and different backgrounds people come from. But yet there's a lot of entitlement along a lot of fans. Now I'm not sitting here to try to trash the fans. If you want to be a fan, you want to do it the way you want to do it, then that's fine with me. But it all stems from uh, when I was talking about baseball on the podcast yesterday, I had a few, when I say a few, I say like two, but I had two people DM me on Twitter and it's like, just rip me for my baseball takes yesterday. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't think I said anything controversial. I didn't think I said anything. And then, so, you know, I kind of went back and forth with them, but essentially both, and I'm not kidding. I don't know if they know each other or what, but both of them came out and they're like, I go to every game. I've watched this Razorback baseball team for 20 years, blah, blah, blah. And this is why you're wrong. This is why it is what it is. And like, they just be like, don't talk about baseball when you know nothing about it. Like that's essential what these two people said. And again, I don't know if they knew each other. Maybe they were just trolling me, but it's just like, you know what? I have admitted so many times. I'm like, I don't, I'm not a huge baseball guy. Like I'm not, I, I applaud everybody that is, uh, I got friends of mine that are much bigger baseball guys than me. And I lean on them for a lot of their references. So if, like during the summertime, and especially when this team's going to be making postseason play, and I'm going to do this podcast, you're not going to hear me on this podcast break down, you know, the the pitching, and uh, you know what what pitches they threw at at what place, and you know what what a what type of slider that it, well, I got. Just I, you're not going to hear it from me because I don't know that stuff. I'm entertained by it, and I I'm going to relay it and and, and give it all uh, give it all I got. But you know, there's sometimes where it's just like. I want fans to be fans for the sake of being fans and, and the entitlement that fans have towards other fans can always be a little bit off putting. And I think that that's what I kind of felt like. I was like, man, like why, why would you not want somebody to be a fan or enjoy what you love so much about it? Because more, more enjoyment, more fans, more everything is always great for the product. And I know it's always great for the teams and always great for the sports. So I've just never understood like where all that comes from. And it's not even just like a Razorback specific thing. I think it's just fans in general. Like they, you know, I used to have some people I knew that would like make it so hard. Like if you're wanting to kind of become a baseball fan, like they would look down upon you unless you had the immediate knowledge of what they did about the game. And if you ask questions about, it, it's like, I mean, you know, it's it's it comes down to the end of it where it's like everybody wants to be a fan, and everybody wants to root them. So just have them let it, let them do it their own way. But. It's when you become entitled because you start thinking of well, my way is better or what I think is better because of, you know, coming from a place of authority. It's like either tell me you're I'm wrong and give me the reasons why I'm wrong is I'm, I'm telling you the quickest way to turn most people off. And I'm definitely one of these people. Is you say I've been watching for so and so many years. OK, that doesn't tell me why I'm wrong. That just tells me that like, oh, I've been doing this. Cool. So give me examples. Like, don't come from me. Don't come to me from a place of authority, give me and cite me exact reasons why I was wrong. That's my whole thing. So probably none of you cared about this and anything that I had to say when it comes to my whining, but I, uh, I don't know, like I love doing this podcast and I love talking about it. And I'll admit, like sometimes it's really tough to come on here every single day and, you know, especially when content's a little light and talk about things and try to, you know, create things. It's just part of the job though. Like it's content creation. I think of things that I feel like would be interesting and I put them together and, and make them all work. And sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. But um, I, I just, I laugh at when people get, like take it so personally if 
you know, like they knew something that I didn't know, or they didn't feel like I knew enough about something. And when I talked about it or anything, it's like, uh, I mean, I appreciate you listening anyways. So anyways, but again, that's, that was just my two cents. That was my whining Wednesday. And who knows, maybe we'll continue to do whining Wednesday. Maybe I'll just do whining every day because I could have plenty of stuff to whine about because I am a whiner and I am proud of it. Well, not proud, but it's just who I am. It's just part of it. But either way, appreciate everybody listening into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. Keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.